I am so excited about today and um, I think you all are going to be really inspired and uh, I, she she just made a face when I said that. <laughs> no, yes, people are going to love this. I keep saying that. I, I keep saying that and I'm really excited because I get to know her more. Um, I got to talk to her in the shop the other day and it was super fun and now um, we get to share all of it with you guys. So let me bring her on. It's Sandy Lai. How are you, Sandy? I'm good, thanks. Good, good. Oh man, that was funny when I said you'll be inspired. She's like, I will, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I say, yes, yes, you are. You are, I, I've been inspired and I, uh, I'm excited to like get to know you more, but also like share like what I've learned about you through the quilt shop to everyone else. So yes, everyone welcome Sandy and it's Sandy Lai, L-A-I, but it's Lai. My husband's Chinese. So, yeah. Yes, her husband's Chinese. He is awesome. I have yet to meet him, but <laughs> I have heard lots of great things about him. So he should make a stop in the shop sometime. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, everyone. Everyone's welcome you, Sandy. I'm sorry. You probably can't see the comments pulling up on the no. side, but uh, everyone's welcoming you super excited to have you so yay awesome well sandy thank you so much for being our guest today for three at three um and let's get right to it sandy what makes you you like <laughs> what makes you happy what brings you joy what things do you like to do uh, usually in my sewing room. Um, there we go. Uh, usually in my sewing room. Um, I spend most of the day in here. Doing <laughs> projects and stuff for my kids, my grandkids. And, yeah. Awesome. Oh, it's kind of cutting out. I know. Let's see. You guys, we tested this, like... <laughs> way before we've been on the phone for a while let's see um okay I'm pulling it up do we want to try your phone sandy sure we can do that okay we'll do that we'll do that we went back from, forth from the computer to the phone and you guys we we were talking and chit-chatting and just having a good time before <laughs> then it comes right down to it and things happen you know it's it's inevitable figure out how to do it <laughs> <laughs> well annette's saying welcome yeah. sandy kenzie's saying hi sandy i know <laughs> she's a little frozen we're gonna fix it ah here we go here we go. All right, that's better. Okay, so maybe I'll just close that computer <laughs> and put my earbuds back in, right? There we go, yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there we go. That's better, right? I okay. I'm sorry we don't get to see your whole beautiful room, but maybe you'll take us on a little tour later, right? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, Sandy. So tell us a little bit about yourself, like where you grew up and uh, yeah, let's start there. Okay, I grew up in just south of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, I was born and raised there. Um, when I graduated from high school, I went to Rick's College. That's where I met my husband. Mm -hmm. And we were married for about four, 
four or five years and then we moved to Hong Kong and we lived in Hong Kong almost 30 years and then we just moved back to you lived in Hong Kong for 30 years that is so cool yeah I loved it over there and then we moved back to the states about five years ago yeah two yeah about almost five years ago wow 2016 so tell us a little bit about Hong Kong. I mean, the dynamic between the States and Hong Kong, like what was, what was that totally like? Totally different, totally different. Um, and the first time I was driving a car, I was so scary <laughs> because it's on the other side of the road. Right, right. Um, but, um, hmm. And a lot of people didn't speak English when we moved there because it was in 1987. So trying to get things done, you know, we moved into a house. So trying to get things done for the house, it was kind of hard because my husband was at work all day. And so I had to deal with things. And but I did learn some Cantonese. Um, mm-hmm. So, but yeah. But the shopping you, was great over there, so. <laughs> we, we talked a little bit about that. Yeah. yeah. You're like, oh, my gosh, you can get so much for for so little, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that. Yeah, that's definitely how it is over there. I, I saw that when we went to Africa, too, just, like, how much you could get. And it's beautiful stuff, like, stuff you don't see in the States, you know. It's just yeah. completely different, so. So, um, how did you, uh, you said you learned a little bit of Cantonese and all of that. How did you try to communicate with those around you, even though you didn't speak the same language? Um, I mean, some people spoke some broken, broken English and, mm-hmm. um, you know, so all the shops and stuff usually spoke at least a little bit of English so mm-hmm. you can get by. Yeah. I'm sure it's like you start to pick up on things. You yeah. probably use like hand signals a lot. <laughs> you're like, uh, you know. Or a calculator for doing prices. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, I'm sure it was a completely different world, but you adapted to your we environment. Adapted, yep. And that, that takes a lot, adapting to new environments, right? Yeah, yeah. But you, your kids grew up there too. My kids grew up there. My son was six when we moved there. And then we adopted our two daughters while we were living there. You have two adopted daughters. I did not know that. Yes. That's very, yes. that's very cool. So, but it was fun. Oh, oh go ahead. Go ahead. No. <laughs> it was funny when we were, you know, after we adopted them, you could always see the Chinese people like talking behind their hands, like, Oh, this lady has got this Chinese kid. And so a lot of times I just said, my husband's Chinese. So what, what is, is he not Chinese? Is he, he is Chinese, but yeah, they were just like, why does this white lady have this Chinese kid? <laughs> like, wait a second here. Yeah. Cause they probably yeah, just so a lot of times I that. just said my husband's Chinese. So, there you go. There you go. How fun. Yeah. <laughs> so your kids like grew up there. They grew up there. They didn't know like anything different, you know? We would always come back to the States for the summer. Oh, it was okay. Too hot in Hong Kong. Because it's like a hundred degrees and a hundred percent humidity. So so we always Thanks. came back to the States for the summers. Okay, so they they got to like probably see family in the states yeah. but also in Hong Kong. Interesting. Wow, I I I'm just imagining that like like as a kid growing up there but then going back and forth just the the difference in the dynamic. So Yeah. That that is but the so kids cool. had friends from lots of places, you know, all over the world. They had lots mm. of friends from different places. So it was good. What a cool experience for them. That That is pretty neat. And what took you guys over to Hong Kong? Was it work? Or... My husband's job. Yeah. Okay. And then we had family there, so that made it, you know, we can 
meet their other grandparents. Right. It makes it easier to go. Right? Yeah. Because <laughs> you'll know someone there. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. So I have to ask, when you were over there, were you into sewing and quilting and all of that? Yeah. Yeah. Did you, did you have a lot of stuff to keep a bit, keep you busy? <laughs> Besides the Yeah, kids, actually, right? in Hong Kong, there's one area uh, called Shui Po, and it's the sewing district. And so you could just go there, and they had thread on the street. They had um, lace, ribbon, and all the little streets just around in one area. So it was great because you could just go and spend the whole day there and get everything you needed. Like a quilter's haven, right? <laughs> it, it was, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, so you probably, did you get into um, machine embroidery there? or was um, it more... I, did, I bought a machine here in the States and took it back with me and then mm-hmm. just used the transformer. But I did have an embroidery machine there. Yeah. Very cool. What kinds of things like did you start making or? Um, I I was doing some quilting there and the fabric was really cheap. I mean, we don't have the, the we didn't have the designer fabrics yeah, that yeah. you have here in the States, but you could always go on the street and find um, cottons for like a dollar a yard. So I have a Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine fabric. if that was how it was? Oh my goodness. A I know, it would yard. be so much nicer. <laughs> oh. Quilting is an expensive hobby. That's what, it is. So my husband's yeah. learning. I'm like, shh, it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It keeps me happy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, I'm sure, I don't know if this is how it was over in Hong Kong, but did they have like a lot of hand dyed fabrics, like a lot of, uh, not really. No. What, what kind of fabrics would you typically see in Hong Kong? Um, and you could always get your broad claws. Um, they had the Chinese silks, they had Ooh. knits. Mm-hmm. So they had quite a, quite an assortment. Wow. Wow. I noticed when we went to Africa, everything is like dipped in wax. Wax, too, yeah. Which I was like, oh, this feels terrible. I would never like cuddle <laughs> up in like a in a quilt like this. But when you wash, once it, you wax, wash it, it's soft. The wax goes soft. away. But yeah, just beautiful, beautiful fabrics that like you just would never see here. So yeah, I, it's cool to have. A, a little piece of the world, right? In, in your sewing <laughs> yeah. space. That's awesome. So my next question is, um, who inspired you to start sewing? Well, that was my mom. Mm-hmm. She died a couple years ago with cancer. Um, she taught me how to sew when I was eight years old. And we always grew up, we would always go to my great grandma's house and she was a quilter. And so my sister and I picked that gene up. Um, and I do have a, a quilt here that was hers. Yes, it's all hand stitched. I'll, I'll um, take myself off the screen. Okay. <gasps> so she made this. It was all bow ties. Oh my goodness. It's all, I did wash it the other day because it was really getting um, kind of yellowed. But all the little blocks on the inside are all hand sewn. Oh my goodness. So she, oh. she was our inspiration, my sister and I. Um, she never taught us how to sew, but my mom did. And then um, Oops. she was 101 when she died, so. 101? 101, yeah. Wow, but wow. She was, but I always a, remember going to her house when I was a kid and, you know, she always had a quilt on. Um, and my son, my niece, and two of my nieces, they were the last ones to get her quilts. So my son has one of her quilts too. What a, what a treasure, right? You, like, yeah, those things are just priceless, right? They are just yeah. 
they're one of a kind. They were made by someone who's one of a kind, right? And like, oh, what, what a special thing to keep and like pass down, right? Yeah, and and it's been fun because I was able to take a, we, I did a class through my girlfriends with um, my granddaughters and I was teaching them how to sew. So that was fun. Yes. And you guys, I actually have some really cute pictures I want to show with this. Leads right into it. So your mom taught you to sew and now you're teaching your granddaughters how to sew. And they did um, the youth sewing classes that we do online. So let me pull these up. They, I kept saying to her before, I'm like, your grandkids are so stinky cute oh but first i want to show this this is her family look how cute they are it's a good looking yeah, this bunch. was taken at christmas so you have this your your one son and then yeah my son and then his wife and then they've got twin boys and then the two girls and then my middle daughter is has the little baby mm -hmm. and then my youngest daughter is on the end with her three kids in front of them oh my gosh they are so cute oh my goodness i love that she's like i have a picture of my family i'm like yes i would love to see it so so the kids range from let's see rowan is almost 11 months he'll be he'll be a year old in June. So he's the youngest and then they go up to the boys will be 16 in July. Holy cow. So yeah, it's been they fun. They grow up fast, right? And they fast. actually all but my all but the littlest one lives um, in Mapleton. So I get to see them quite often. Oh, how fun. Well, I always see you guys, your your pictures of you all swimming or uh just yeah. have, just get togethers i love that you're very family like centered i love that so let, let me pull up these pictures these are so cute here's her granddaughters um, part of the youth sewing this is the these are the pillowcases they made yeah and actually they pulled everything off of my shelf and picked up their fabrics out themselves it's their own little fabric store in your and your sewing. It room. is. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That is so cute. And how did they do? How did, did they, they did enjoy pretty good? It? Yeah, they enjoyed yeah. the class. Yeah. Oh, good, good. I think that is just so cute. And I've got a couple more here. Oh, here's your one granddaughter. It looks like she's made several. She made that one at Christmas time. She wanted to do something for her brother for Christmas. Oh, how fun. That's a nice sister. I should make something for my brother. <laughs> 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 oh, that is cute. It, what, I'm sure it brings them so much joy to have a finished project, you know, like that yeah. they could show off to their family or their friends. And, and yes, they look so proud. Um, I have a couple more. This was so cute. These were the emoji pillows. Yes. <laughs> Super cute. You guys used the red glitter. We did use red glitter on them. Oh my gosh. How fun. Perfect. And I think Perfect. we also have the black for the smile too. Yes. Oh yes, it is glitter. I love that. It's perfect for their age group, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they love anything emoji, right? Love it. And then... And sparkly. <laughs> and sparkly, right. <laughs> I just died laughing at this picture. The bucket hats and the zipper bags. <laughs> How fun. And they'll always remember these moments sewing with grandma, right? Yeah. 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 That is fun. so cute. So fun. Oh my gosh. I love it. Kedzie says, what a sweetheart. Your, <laughs> your grandkids. Yes. I don't know who's on here, but they say they look so proud of what they're, uh, they're, oh, 
they look so proud they are of what they've accomplished. I love it. <laughs> Sorry, I can't talk right now. <laughs> yes, it's it's just so cute. I know. Kenzie said, I can't get over the cuteness. Same. They are so adorable. Thanks. Love, love, love them. Yeah, and I love seeing you post pictures of, of them and holding up their projects. It's so cute. <laughs> so what... I know we've talked about the kids, what projects they've been working on, but Sandy, what project are you currently working on? Currently working on. I just and I'm sure there's probably morning. several, but <gasps> cute. I just finished. I, I made that for my little grandson because he'll be coming for his birthday. So I, that was one of the A comments. So I, I love that. Got that finished. Oh my gosh. This is a birthday present. I don't know if my daughter-in-law's on here, but anyway, this is... <laughs> I know. Oh, um, my goodness. Let's see. <gasps> That's... Oh, my gosh. It's a little beehive. I love it's it. It's a little beehive. That's um, gorgeous. It was... Somebody had... I went to a quilting retreat, and the, the pattern was... It was a row by row mm -hmm. that, you know, they had several years ago. But I wanted to make it big enough so that it would fit on the bench pillow. And so oh. I just kind of added a little bit of length to it and the width. So, but my son is a beekeeper, so I wanted to do that really? for a little porch. Yeah. There you go. I love it. I so, love the bees. So that's one. And then this was a Kimberbell. Uh, oh, the notebook. This pattern is not a Kimberbell, but um, yeah. the notebook. <laughs> Uh, what cover it, was like notables or something like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so I made that oh, for a friend fun. for her birthday so yeah yeah you combine different that's what I like we we always try to say like don't think beyond what the original pattern was like how can you like combine a couple together so you took the notebook so the Kimberbell notables and then another design with the elephant you found a row by row pattern, but then you mixed it to be a bench pillow. Like you a bench know, pillow. <laughs> right? So. And then this is just a little bucket, too, oh. the, the little um, thing. So I, oh my those are going to a friend for her birthday. Oh, how fun. Yeah. We we love elephants because, and I'll tell you a little backstory real quick. We love elephants because my Nana, so my mom's grandma, we call their Nana, the one who inspired my girlfriend's quilt shop, that whole mm -hmm. story. Uh, she had an amazing collection of elephants, like oh, marble, wow. porcelain, <laughs> I mean, just all the above elephants. And so whenever we see elephants, we're like, oh my gosh, that's like Nana. And so that just made, that just reminded me. So how, how cute, but yes, I love how you, um, you're combining different patterns. You're thinking, I have this design in my library, right? How can I use it for other things than what the original purpose was for? Yeah. Yeah. Because it really is, it, it's yours. You can do whatever you want <laughs> with it, right? Right? Oh, so cute. People are saying they love the bees. They love that quiet book. Yes, that is so cute. And they said, what a great idea to put the elephant on the on the little <laughs> notebook thing, notebook cover. Yeah, I just took, yeah, I actually embroidered that out first before I started making the notebook, so the cover. How fun, how fun. Um, so machine embroidery, let's talk a little bit about that. Okay, sure. You, <laughs> <laughs> I know you I do like lots it. of machine embroidery, I and do. you do lots of yeah. Kimberbell, right? I know. I'm, I've got started on the the bench pillow for July, so I haven't finished it yet. But uh, I need to work on that. <laughs> Would you say but you're a Kimberbell other... addict? Um, probably. <laughs> it's okay. 
a lot of the things. <laughs> it's it's okay to admit it because we're all there, right? <laughs> no, what I was going to ask about machine embroidery is what is like a tip you have um, that kind of involves machine embroidery? Or what is something that you've learned that was like an aha moment for you? Yeah, don't get your fingers stuck. <laughs> don't get your fingers I, stuck. I, yeah. Because I was trying to away. hold down the fabric while it was going and yeah got my finger needle through the finger yeah use, it was not the, fun. use the tape or whatever tape. you're using <laughs> to hold it in place keep your hands out of the way <laughs> yeah <laughs> right don't give a generous piece of tape across the project to, to keep you safe right <laughs> yep. i love that i love that and said really neat projects thank you Yes, I think so too. So fun. Um, but let's see. There was a. I feel like there were a couple questions. Hey, I will say if any of you have any questions for Sandy, you're welcome to type them below, and we can ask those too. So, um, where was the elephant design from? It was from Designs by Juju. Designs by. It's Juju. called Mint. Yeah, Mendy Elephants is what it is. So, super cute. I love that. I love that. Yeah, I think it was a set of like 11 or some 10 or 11 of them. And they were really How cute. So. And I just used some colors that were kind of in the fabric. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, I was going to say, with um, how do you pick your threads for something like that? Like, do you, um, I, I don't know where I would start. I kind of look at the fabric sometimes and see what mm -hmm. colors are in it and mm -hmm. then kind of match them. But I have a whole drawer full, well, two drawers full of embroidery thread that I picked up in Hong Kong. So, um, there you go. let me see if I can just show this. Real quick. And I think people want to see your sewing room too. Okay. Oh my goodness. Well, Looking these are all really guys. big spools. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna make the, your screen bigger. Oh my goodness! So, so I just pull stuff out when I need it. And... I love it. <laughs> I love it. Well, there was one store that sold embroidery thread, so I just bought kind of pretty much every <laughs> color that they had. You're like, and it'll probably I'll last take one me more each. than my lifetime. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, people are saying they would love to see your sewing room. Sure. If you feel comfortable with it. <laughs> if you, I, I'm fine with it. Just, um, it, yeah, it, if people get sick, don't, <laughs> don't <Yeah>. look. <laughs> Close your eyes and she'll tell okay. you when to open them, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, let me see. Let's see, I've got to turn my phone around. So I've got oh a little ironing gosh. station. I've got a little bathroom. I've got my Accu quilt. My okay. long arm is finally Those back up. Those cabinets are gorgeous. Yes, and it's full of fabric. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the bottom, I have little drawers that have oh. all kinds of stuff in them oh my gosh gorgeous this is my sewing area and then i when we built our house i put in an area so that i could have friends come over and sit and sew with me oh how fun was not good during covid but we'll get started again and then i've got a big cutting table that I got at Christopher and Banks before they closed and they were selling this table for a hundred dollars and so I've oh got my, my cutting mats on it. What a steal. Did you have this like specially designed? Like did you have something in mind of what you wanted your sewing room to look like? I told my husband I had to have a big sewing room <laughs> when we <laughs> built our house. So and then um 
This is a, a sewing machine he bought me for Christmas a couple years ago, so it's a little oh treadle. Oh my gosh. So it's been fun. And then this is Those my kind of gorgeous sewing wall. I have all kinds of little doodads up there on my wall. So yeah. I love it. Thank you, Sandy, for showing us your sewing oh, you're room. Welcome. That is gorgeous. That's why I spend most of my time in here. Oh, I would too. I would too. <laughs> Judy asked, do you have enough room for all of us girlfriends? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, um, one of my friends asked if they could come over and, and spend a couple nights. And so we did. We went downstairs in our basement and we set up tables and we sat and sewed for all day and into the night. And there we go. For a, a few days. A girlfriend so. <laughs> retreat at Sandy's house. <laughs> <laughs> but it oh, was fun. We had a good time. And people are asking, where do you live? I live in Mapleton, Utah. In Utah. Yeah. So we're about an hour south of Salt Lake. Yeah. Yep, she lives in Mapleton, but she comes here all the time, and we love it. <laughs> people are just saying they love those cabinets. I know. Aren't those stunning? Yeah, they were all built in. Because I had some when I was in Hong Kong, and I sold them when we moved, after we moved here. Um, and I said, I want the same kind of thing so that I all my fabric can just go in there and not get messed up with dust and stuff. So. It's, you know, I if it were my sewing room, it, it would be disaster in those cabinets. But I'll, I would say it's a controlled disaster. It looks good in the yeah, white there cabinets. Yeah, there are some that need to be gone through again because I'll just pull something out and then try to shove it back in. <laughs> oh my gosh. So funny. But yeah, controlled disaster. It's okay. You Chaos, People yeah. don't pay attention to the inside. They're looking at the beautiful outside. <laughs> I love it. Oh yes, people are saying, I love your sewing room, love your space. I know. Yeah, so it's, it's 18, 18 by 32 is what my room is. That's a big room. It's a big room. 18 so. by 32. I'm like looking around in here. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's your little sewing heaven, right? Your yes. Just little yep. space to be creative and, and all yeah. that. And it's been fun. I had, uh, before COVID hit, I had three girlfriends that would come over. I, I knew them all in Hong Kong and they would come over and we would sew together. So. Oh, I love that. I love that. So fun. Oh my gosh, Sandy, it's been so fun to get to know you. I loved hearing about Hong Kong. I loved hearing, I loved you showing your quilt um those different projects you guys isn't friday with friends so much fun i love it's it fun. Yeah. and it gets us inspired you know what i should get white cabinets in our new apartment <laughs> i'm gonna tell you Kay that be like i want white cabinets be like yeah <laughs> you get a lifetime table that's what you get right now <laughs> and that works it I, does my first little when we moved to Hong Kong, my first little sewing room was the closet and I, I got a little countertop and put it in there and I had, you know, it sat across a couple desks and that's all I had. So yeah, you just do what you can and love it. So fun. And when then we you built worked this your house, way I was able to get something <laughs> I wanted. So <laughs> it's just part of the house plans, right? Have yep. to have a sewing room. Love it. Love it. All right. Well, you guys, that is the end of our Friday Friends. But before I officially end, Sandy, what is the best piece of life advice you've received? I think not to compare yourselves to others. Um, just keep improving yourself, but don't compare yourself. Um, I don't know if I can... Let me see if I can uh, pull this up. This was on Facebook today, and so I really liked it. It says, do your best with your stumbles and your uh, triumphs, with your tears and your laughter, 
with your giving, with your loving, and your showing up because no one does your best better than you. So I thought that was really good. I love that. I absolutely love that. You know, do your best. Don't compare. And, and just yeah, I got lost. Oh. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, let's see. There we go. There she is. She's back. <laughs> oh. Let's see. I lost the sound on you. Oh. Guest has muted themselves. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know what happened. Let's see. Uh, I'm not muting her. I don't want to mute her. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know, Sandy. We lost the sound. That's okay. <laughs> oh. That's okay. Well. I think I lost it. Okay, Sandy. Well, thank you so much <laughs> for being part of this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it worked the whole time and then boom, happened. All right. Well, thanks so much, Sandy. You guys, isn't she awesome? Absolutely love that, that lady. She is so great. Don't know what happened to the sound, you guys. It was so weird. But you guys, isn't she such like a like a happy, fun person? I thought so. So let's see. I was reading these comments. Yes, everyone, say thank you to Sandy. I say thank you, Sandy, for joining us. It was so much fun, and uh, I, I I love Friday with friends. You guys, I just love it. I love it. Love it. So, yeah, let's give a round of applause to Sandy. We got to see her beautiful sewing room. Oh, my gosh. That's what I aspire to have. <laughs> All right.